So, I started a new game two hours ago, and this is my character. I can get any normal weapon I want to plus 12 at round table hold at any time, although this one is plus 13. I have a shield that blocks 100% physical damage. I have two completely different sets of armor, both of which can get my poise upwards of 30. I have this, Radagon Saw Seal, which gives plus 5 to 4 different stats, though I am level 33. Uh, my Flask of Wondrous Physic gives me a shield and increases the power of my charged attacks. I have two reliable summons that have been leveled up to plus 2. I can coat my weapon in Fire Grease or Blood Grease as much as I want because I know exactly where to farm the materials easily. I have 10 healing flasks, all of which have been powered up by Sacred Tears. I can easily buy Boiled Prawns for defense, and I can easily make Crystal Darts, which are very useful in a variety of situations. I think I broke the game. Let me show you how. First, you want to visit the Gateside Ruins, located here. Here, you get the Whetstone Knife for Ashes of War, and your mount. With your mount, head east to this little encampment. Here, you'll find the Armorer's Cookbook 1. This gives you the ability to craft Fire Grease, which we'll use later. After this, head east along the path from the Gateside Ruins until you come across this bridge and this beetle. This beetle drops the Ash of War Determination, which is a powerful Ash of War that can be used on a variety of weapons from the very beginning of the game. Continue past the bridge and take a left here to go north into the Mistwood area. Continue along the path, avoid the giant, and head into the third Church of Marika. Here you'll find your Flask of Wondrous Physic. This is a customizable healing potion that replenishes its one charge at a site of Lost Grace. Make sure you pick up your first Sacred Tear as well. These increase the amount of healing that your flasks give you. Next, continue south along the path. Soon, you'll reach your first Guide Stell, which unlocks the map for this area. Look at your map and go towards the Minor Erd Tree. Here you'll find a basin with two Crystal Tears. These can be added to your Flask of Wondrous Physic, increasing your stamina regeneration and the damage done by your charge attacks, which will come in handy later. Continue south along the path until you reach Fort Height. You'll find a grace underneath a rocky outcrop here. Make your way up to the castle and loot your first Golden Seed. Golden Seeds increase the charges of your Crimson Flask. Now, you can run past these enemies or fight them, it's up to you. But as you explore in and around Fort Height, remember, Fort Height is where you get blood items. First, Blood Rose is a crafting material that respawns every time you rest at a grace. Blood Rose can be used to make Blood Grease, which you can apply to your weapon to make sure it does a lot more bleeding damage. The recipe for Blood Grease can be found directly below where I am now, and the mini boss behind me drops Bloody Slash, which is an Ash of War that would be fantastic for you if you're looking to do a blood build. But up this ladder is what we came for and it's one half of the Dectus Medallion. We'll be using this item much later on to shortcut into later sections of the game. So if you don't have a plus three weapon, then you're gonna wanna visit the Limgrave Tunnels located here. What you're looking for mostly are these yellow deposits on the wall, which are smithing stones. Smithing stones upgrade most of your normal weapons, and that number next to them in brackets dictates what tier the smithing stone is in. So for example, to get a weapon to plus three, you need 12 smithing stone shards at tier one. The first upgrade requires two, the second requires four, and the third requires six, so 12 in total. Then you move on to tier two of smithing stones to bring you to plus six, and tier three for plus nine, and tier four for plus 12, and so on and so on. This white deposit is a somber smithing stone used to upgrade special weapons. These work similarly to smithing stones in the sense that they have tiers, except you only need one somber smithing stone for each tier upgrade. When you think you have everything, warp back to Gateside Ruins and head northwest through the ravine. At the end of the ravine is your second golden seed. Head west from this golden seed until you go through the grove of trees and the graveyard. In one of the graveyards are the ashes of Godric's soldiers. Next, go back to the golden tree and then head east from the golden tree. Go through the field of giants until you find this statue. Get one to break it and pick up a ton of smithing stone shards. You now have enough shards to upgrade your weapon to plus three. Next, go north until you hit the Warmaster's shack. 
Here, you can pick up a ton of Ashes of War, but the best one might actually be No Skill, which allows you to apply no skill to your shield and allow your skill to default to whatever your main hand weapon is using. This lets you use the powerful weapon art of your main hand without having to two-hand it. When you're done, you can kill Banal if you really want his armor, although that will ruin his questline and I wouldn't recommend it unless you know what you're giving up. The real reason we're here though is right next to the Warmaster Shack, Root Resin. This is a core component whenever you craft weapon buffs. You can farm this infinitely by just resting at the grace and going to pick it up. If you want to make an infinite amount of fire grease, head north until you find the other component, which are smoldering butterflies. If you want to make an infinite amount of blood grease, go back to Fort Height and run around and inside of the castle to find blood roses. Next, we have to go south to the Weeping Peninsula. Cross the Bridge of Sacrifice and go through the ravine until you find this upturned carriage. Inside is the Morning Star, a blunt weapon that also does bleed damage, both of which are very important later in the run. Continue along the path until you find the guide still for the Weeping Peninsula. Unlock the map and then continue along a little bit further to this golden tree where you'll find another golden seed. After this, go back the way you came, except turn left near the ravine in order to access the western side of the Weeping Peninsula. At the northern side of the Weeping Peninsula, you'll find a sacred tear in the Church of Marica, and then further along at the western side of the island, you'll also find another sacred tear at another Church of Marica. At this point, it's time to do a little bit of fighting, so let's make our character more powerful. Warp all the way back to the Church of Ella to upgrade your Morning Star to plus three, and coincidentally talk to Renna to get your Spirit Calling Bell. Also, upgrade your flasks as well. After this, we need to get an item that boosts our Rune Acquisition for later in the run. So, go southwest from the Church of Ella until you hit the beach. Go along the coast, past the Merchant, and pick up the Gold Pickled Foulfoot. These next two things are somewhat optional, although I would recommend them if you want to be powerful. Head towards the middle of the island, from the western side, and you'll find the Tombswood Catacombs hidden under a little precipice. Always loot all of the glove wart inside of catacomb dungeons, as it's this upgrade material that allows you to upgrade your spirits. At the end of this catacomb in particular, you'll be able to get Godric soldiers to plus two, and we'll upgrade them a little bit later on. The end boss of this dungeon also drops an incredibly powerful spirit summon called Lutil. To summon him, however, you need 21 points in your mind stat. So if you're planning on leveling a caster build, you might want to invest in Lutil and in your mind stat as well. Above the Tombswood Catacombs is an Erd Tree Avatar. It drops components for your Flask of Wondrous Physic, the Opaline Bubble Tier gives you a shield, and the Crimson Burst Bubble Tier gives you health regen over time. These two are both my favorites so far in the game. This is where things get real. Warped the third church of Marica, where you got your flask of wondrous physic earlier, and go north behind the church. At the dead end of a river, hidden in some bushes, is a portal. This portal takes you to the very northeastern edge of the map in Kaled. You are currently very underleveled for this area, but that's going to change very soon as we're about to pick up over 50,000 runes in one go. We're going to head south from Grail's Dragon Barrow. As you travel along the path, you're going to see these guys. These guys are small, but deadly. They will one-shot you most of the time. However, they're very easy to stun lock, and they drop a lot of runes. So if you ever need to quickly rune farm, come here, warp to Faroom Great Bridge, which is a little bit further on, and kill those guys. For now though, continue south past the bridge, and follow the path as it curves to the right until you see the Putrid Avatar. Go behind the tree of the Putrid Avatar to find a spirit spring, which will bring you right behind an enormous dragon. We're gonna kill this. It's gonna take a while, but it's worth it. Around this point, you'll probably get the invitation to go to Round Table Hold. You don't have to say yes to this yet, and also while you're at the Grace Checkpoint, upgrade your Crimson Flasks as much as you can. Next, we're going to kill the dragon. I want to mention at this point, I'm not 100% sure that this doesn't ruin any quest lines, so if it does, please leave a comment and I'll pin that comment to the top. If this does ruin any quest lines, you can always go back to the little guys at Faroom Great Bridge and farm your runes there instead. To kill the dragon, craft some blood grease, apply it to your weapon, and get swinging. 
We learned how to do this earlier in the Fort Height section. However, if you skip that, you can always just smack it with a normal Morning Star since that does have some bleed properties. In a few minutes, the dragon will be almost dead and at this point, use the Gold Pickled Foot in order to boost your rune acquisition for that big payout. If you do this, you'll get 15,000 more runes because the dragon drops 50,000 and five of the dragon hearts of its surrounding dragons which die at the same time. You can hand in these dragon hearts for spells at the Churches of Dragon Communion located here and here. Make sure you spend these runes immediately. You don't want to lose them. So figure out what your build is generally going to be because we're about to die. Behind us is Fort Farrath and this is a tricky place to get out of and defeat all the enemies within. So we're just gonna run through it and probably die at the end. We're here for a few things. First, you'll loot the other half of the Dectus Medallion, which we're using later to skip to an end game section. But we're also here for Radagon's Saw Seal, a talisman that you can get by dropping down one of the holes located at the end here. When you get down, break through some pots and get ready for a jump. But make sure you loot that item at the end. Don't do what I did. That item is a golden rune that'll give you a ton of levels. Keep going and then loot Radagon's Saw Seal. This gives you plus five in Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dexterity, which are stats that most classes end up using, and it all comes at the downside of taking more damage. Now, I tested this, and I only took a couple points more damage than if I didn't wear it. So that just seems crazy good to me. Especially in the early game, where having 20 extra stat points matters a lot more relative to your low level. The next thing we have to do is travel on this mountain path that takes you around Stormvale and allows you to bypass it and go to the next open world which is Leonia of the Lakes. Once here, go to the nearby church and pick up another sacred tier. Head north from here, go through the ravine, through the camp, and then sit down at the grace next to a merchant. This merchant sells the kite shield, which is a great 100% physical block shield, and he also sells the crafting recipe for crystal darts. If you don't have enough runes for these at this point, remember you can always go back to Faroon Great Bridge and farm a little bit there, but pick up the cookbook and pick up the shield if you don't already have a better shield. We'll use the crystal darts later on, but for now, continue along the road, pick up the map fragment for this area, and then continue on until you meet this NPC sitting in this gazebo. Take this opportunity to mark your map. If you go up, you'll see a mining cave, which are these reddish holes right here. Mark it because you've got a long way to go. As a side note, that NPC has a quest that sends you to the northwest in search of an abandoned hut. Find the abandoned hut and the thug nearby will sell you boiled prawns for 600 runes each, which vastly increases your defenses while consumed. So he's a great source of defensive items and if you do his quest line, he'll show up later in the video in the next area as well. After this, follow the path that is demarcated by these light blue glowing lanterns that appear within the fog every now and then. Eventually, you'll find your next grace checkpoint and a guide stell which unlocks the middle section of the map. Take this opportunity to mark this gazebo on the map to your southeast. This one gives you three smithing stone shards tier three, which will help you upgrade your weapon very soon. Grab these and head north to your main marker. I should probably explain what the main marker is for. This is for a cave, a mining cave, that gives you a ton of shards, but most importantly, it gives you a smithing stone bell bearing. Bell bearings can be handed into the statue at the round table hold, and from that point on, that statue will sell you more items. In this case, the bell bearing will unlock smithing stones tier one and smithing stones tier two for infinite purchase, meaning you can get any normal weapon you like up to plus six anytime you want. Later on in the video, we'll unlock smithing stones tier three and four for purchase, which will allow you to get any weapon to plus 12, which is insane. And I just think it's great to give players this information because I'm the kind of person who likes experimenting with weapons and with these unlocked, you'll have way more freedom to do so. At the very end of the video, I'll talk about how to upgrade weapons that require somber smithing stones as well. But for now, explore this cave. And in this cave, in addition to smithing stone shards and somber stone shards, try to pick up a lot of cracked crystals that you find on the walls as well. These can be used to craft crystal darts, and you got the recipe book for that at the start of this area. 
Crystal darts deal good damage, they come out quickly, and it's good for finishing off enemies, it's good for minor enemies, and it's good for maintaining your super armor damage that you've done to a boss by dealing consistent damage and never letting them recover. You've properly looted everything in this cave, you should have enough smithing stone shard level 3s in order to upgrade your weapon to plus 9. If you haven't, it'll probably just go up to plus 8. Regardless, upgrade your weapon as much as you can by going to the blacksmith in Round Table Hold, and by this point, Roderica should have also appeared in Round Table Hold. Talk to Roderica, then talk to the blacksmith, then talk to Roderica again, and back and forth until she becomes a spirit tuner. Here, she can be used to upgrade your spirits, and here, you should upgrade Godric's soldiers to level 2. With your weapon and spirits upgraded, you should be ready to fight the boss. This is maybe the hardest thing in the run, although honestly, it's not that difficult. The whole reason we chose this weapon and the reason we chose these spirits is because they all do blunt damage to this boss. And the boss is very weak to blunt damage. Just let your spirits get the aggro and try to R2 her enough to the point where she gets knocked down. At this point, her skin is cracked and she'll get staggered and you can just spam R2 to defeat her easily. If you're having trouble, remember to use your Flask of Wondrous Physic, and remember to buff your weapon with fire as well. Now you have the Bell Bearing, and you can get any weapon you like up to plus 6. But what if you want to go further? For this next section we're going to unlock the next Bell Bearing, which allows you to buy smithing stones that allow you to get your weapon to plus 12, which is pretty insane if you come back here to clear the content with it. At this point, I kind of want to offer a bit of a disclaimer. If you're not having trouble with the game at this point, I don't think you really need to go much further. A plus 6 or a plus 9 weapon is more than enough at this stage and you can just go back and level up and clear the previous content. If you do want to go further, you might risk upsetting a few quest lines that you're on and you're going to see a lot of areas that maybe should be saved for when you're actually up to them. But if you really do want to become god mode early, then go for it. You can use the Dectus medallions we gathered in previous sections of the video to unlock the Grand Lift for use, which shortcuts you into the next stage, which is Atlas. Exit the lake here and head north, then northwest, until you reach the edge of this cliff. You'll see some graves sticking out of the wall. Carefully platform your way down and then reach this grace checkpoint Further on from the Grace Checkpoint is another Sacred Tier, and further on from that to the northeast is the Grand Lift. You can take a secret path to get up here, but honestly getting the medallions was kind of on the way for us, and there were a lot of other great things around those medallions, so yeah, this path is great. Once you're at Atlas Plateau, head northeast. Along the path to the left is your first Golden Seed, as well as a Guide Stell and a Grace Checkpoint nearby. Directly west from here is another Golden Seed, and once you have that one you can head east into the city itself. Go up the hidden path to the left to avoid getting shot by arrows, and make your way inside to find two Golden Seeds and a Grace Checkpoint. To the northeast from this point is another two Golden Seeds, uh, which brings your grand total of flasks, uh, if you started with a Golden Seed, to 10, which is a staggering amount. Now, if you did the prawn quest line, you can go east from here and find the thug selling more prawns for 600 runes each, and these are an even better version, slightly better. Uh, but if you didn't do that, go southeast from the last golden tree we visited and take this spirit spring down into the lake. We're heading to the cave at the southern end, which contains your next bell bearing. This bell bearing gets your weapons up to plus 12, and it's not even a boss fight, you just find it in a chest in this cave. There's a lot of illusory walls in this cave, so make sure you roll through them all to progress, and pick up as many shards as you can, as usual. So now, with enough shards to get your weapon to plus 12, or maybe even plus 13, you're very powerful. But there's more. I'm not going to go as in-depth on these, I'm mostly just going to mark them on the map and help you find them for yourself. First, if you want to upgrade special weapons with somber smithing shards, then you can get the bell bearing to upgrade them to plus two in Limgrave, which has a transporter chest that takes you there. The path to the boss is quite hidden, and the boss is very hard. You'll actually have an easier time getting your weapons to plus three and plus four by accessing this cave here and getting the next bell bearing from killing two Crystallia. Now, if you want the armor sets that I mentioned earlier in the video, you have two options. 
One of them is found in this dark village to the southwest of Leonia. You don't have to go up to the plateau, it's actually underneath the plateau, so you just access it from the lake. All you have to do is talk to this pot guy and go back to the round table hold and you'll shortly have the armor. The next set is D's set, which is a part of Fia's questline. To initiate this questline, just talk to Fia at this point in the game and be embraced by her a couple of times. Eventually, she'll ask you to give a dagger to its original owner, who is D, so talk to D and progress that questline. If you're looking for another medallion, a great one is found at the very start of the game behind this Stoneswood fog gate. Progress down, avoid the chariot, and jump off the ledge here, and progress forward and you'll eventually find this, the Erd Tree's Favor. This increases your HP, your stamina, and your equipment load, which is fantastic. And also in the description is a link to Frenzy, my new piece of merch. If you like this video, consider buying it. It's only going to be available for a few more weeks and then it's never going to exist again. So check it out if you want to have something Elden Ring related to wear. Also, before I go, I want to give a shout out to R1Spam, who helped me a lot with some of the research in this video. He has a bunch of entertaining and informative YouTube videos on Elden Ring, so please go and check him out. But thank you, as always, for watching. I really hope that this video helps some people who are about to quit the game get a little bit further and experience just the majesty of this game. Like, it's just mind-bendingly incredible what they've achieved here. So, enjoy, and good luck.